या ली मदद इन द मोस्ट होली एंड ग्लोरियस नेम ऑफ बिलाविद इमाम द लोड ऑफ द एज एंड टाइम खुदा बंद मौलाना शाह करीम हुसैनी प्लेस माई स्पिरिचुअल ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स मेंबर्स ऑफ द जमात वी आर गैदर्ड इन बेतुल ख्याल मजलिस एंड आई थोट टूडे आई मस्ट स्पीक अबाउट some practical aspect of betul khayal many members who come to betul khayal have questions of practical nature into their minds and because of such practicality it is important that we should understand the basis of our own tariqa with respect to betul khayal practice first of all let me quote to you two specific paragraph from a farman made by molana hazri imam in 1972 in africa please say salawat molana hazri imam says when you leave this world your physical world will be predominated by your spiritual life i pray that you should be successful in bangi that you should have light in your soul that you should be stronger against materialism kanavadan kanavadan i will begin by emphasizing that everything you see touch hear and everything material will disappear and only your soul will remain those who forget this basic fact they are committing a very great mistake the day you die nothing will be left except your soul and that is why i emphasize that you must spend some time to prepare for life hereafter this is the meaning of betul khayal if you succeed in betul khayal you will have inner strength and happiness and you will be strong enough to bear any material or physical suffering please say salawat how wonderful and how lucky that we are that imam is disclosing before us aspects of the soul aspects of the mystery of life hereafter and imam says that i emphasize that you must spend some time in the development of your soul imam says the day you die nothing will remain absolutely nothing except your soul but imam also says that if you succeed in betul khayal you will have this inner strength you will have this happiness and you will be strong enough to bear any material or physical suffering what a great gift what a wonderful power today the majority of mankind on this planet in this time and age is struggling confronting to try to remove suffering from their hearts from their minds from their families from society sometime a whole nation is in the process of suffering and yet mankind does not learn the lesson that we are here on this earth only for a limited period of time consider the life of a human being if you think as a human being that we live let us say for 75 years and every day of our life we sleep 8 hours that is one third of the day we spend in bed that means over 75 years of life you have spent 25 years sleeping the remaining 50 years that remains 
you have spent 25 years growing up and the remaining 25 years you spend struggling in the existence of the material world and the material life only to realize that all of this materialism is something that will remain here and nothing of it is coming with us what then is the purpose of life you prepare yourself for 25 years to struggle for the following 25 years and 25 years we spend in bed perhaps more because of sickness disease in young age children sleep sometime for 12 14 18 hours so we spend more what time is left in the material world to prepare ourselves for the life hereafter has been very limited yet Imam out of his divine grace Imam out of his divine mercy shows us the path he shows us the tariqah that this is the way you practice Bangi this is the way you practice Betul Kial by doing XYZ things you can liberate your soul because Imam tells us from today this is the only thing that will remain the only thing so you ask yourself this question <clears throat> how then is our Bangi practice and let me today answer it in very clear terms in our tariqah members of the Jamaat Imam does not prescribe any specific sitting position Imam does not prescribe any specific methodology sometimes people come and ask should we join yoga classes should we learn how to breathe should we learn XYZ techniques or method and we say to them why do you want to learn those things if you are learning because of physical exercise if you do yoga to improve your physique it is a different matter if you do physical exercise for the purpose of physique it is a totally different matter but if you say you want to join a yoga class or you want to perform other types of exercises for the purpose of bangi then the answer is no why is this the case the reason is very simple the reason is this when Imam comes to a Jamaat and when the Imam is with the Jamaat at a time when Imam gives the Betul Kial bowl Imam gives the complete system to the Jamaat Imam does not leave anything untouched or unsaid for example if Hazar Imam says this is the bowl this is the meaning of the bowl and Hazar Imam says when you come to Bangi concentrate on the meaning of your bowl full stop sometime he will add if you are sick do not practice Bangi Hazar Imam says if spiritual daughters are expecting do not practice Bangi if you are well come back and practice Bangi people say is that all there is simply concentrate on the meaning of the bowl nothing else to do indeed there is a reason why Imam does not say anything else when we receive a specific bowl from the Imam when we receive the specific Isma Azam from the Imam in that Isma Azam is already encompassed everything a momin, everything a believer needs for the purpose of his progress there was a time in the past when first of all before climbing the spiritual heights a human being had to perfect his body that is to say before you can even hope to climb any heights in your spiritual progress you need to perfect your body 
For example, a system called Hat Yoga does that. And for that there is a specific bowl, a specific process. If you become perfect in your body, then the second prospect is to strengthen your mind, your man. For that there are many different systems. For that there is a different bowl. Only then, when you have perfected your mind, you can begin to think of the level of the spirit. Imam, Imam gives to the Jamaat a concession, a barakat in Beitul Qiyal. The bowl Imam gives to the Jamaat takes the Jamaat directly to the level of the spirit. It bypasses the body perfection, it bypasses the mind perfection. That's why Imam says, you do not need to concentrate on your body. You do not need to think what you must do about your mind. Simply, Imam says, come to Jamaat Khana, take your position, don't give pain or suffering to your body or to your mind and concentrate on the meaning of the bowl. Imam knows that in this time, in this age, it is not possible for us, in the circumstance that we live, that first you must practice a form of meditation to perfect your body, then to perfect your mind, then to perfect other aspects of your being, before you can leave the level of the spirit. It is a very difficult thing, especially in this day and age. In an age when the human being is 99.9% .9 immersed into materialism. If you had to devote time to perfect your body and perfect your mind, you will never reach the level of the spirit. That's why, members of the Jamaat, we are lucky, fortunate, we have an Imam of the time, and out of Imam's immense love and affection for us, his nur indicates to us how and what we must practice the Bangi according to the time. And in today's time, Imam gives this grace to us and says, get up and come to Bangi and practice. In many other systems you will find today, for example, TM, S, and many other systems that you find, they have their own system, but they have no connection with our practice. Our Bangi, our system, is based in one thing only, the grace of the Imam. Our Bangi, is based in one fundamental rule and principle. The rahimat Imam gives to that person who practices and who receives that bowl. Our Bangi is based entirely in the rahimat of Imam. It is not based on any other external component. Because isme azam is the nur of the Imam. And Imam says, once I've given you isme azam, there is nothing left to give you. But Hazrat Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah alayhi salam says to us, ke tamne aakam selu kariyai puche kyaare tamne ani kadar nathi. Because we have made this thing easy for you, you have no appreciation, you have no value for it. If Imam tomorrow comes to this Jamaat Khana, inshallah, and says, who are the people who will receive the new bowl? The Jamaat Khana will be full like this. How many people come in the morning? It is a commitment that we have made. It is a spiritual commitment. It is an amanat. Once you have taken bowl from Imam, it is an amanat. Read in Quran what it says. That those who take amanat from the Imam, those who take amanat from Allah, and do not fulfill it, indeed they are the losers. 
they are people who lose. Imam says in this Farman which I read, if you succeed in Baitul Qiyal, you will have inner strength, happiness, and you will be strong enough to bear any material or physical suffering. Material or physical suffering. Now I ask you, members of the Jamaat, particularly those who made a commitment to the Imam, is it a difficult thing that Imam has asked of you to give one hour of your time in 24 hours for the practice of this Bangi to relieve you of your physical and material suffering? If at all that is an objective in your life, but more so to gain that inner strength, to gain that inner happiness. We live in a country, North America, we live in this continent that is full of rich people. And all of us wants to be rich. Have you seen any rich people taking with them a single dime they have earned during their lifetimes? Look at the condition of these rich people in this society. Do you think they have happiness in them? These are the very rich people, and you can look at every month, there are dozens of articles about these rich people and their lifestyles. What do they do with their money? They say, we are ready to pay any amount to anyone who can show us somehow, some means, somewhere to gain this inner strength, this inner happiness. We have all the wealth of the world, but they realize this is not all. There must be something more to life than just a dollar value. Imam says to us, if you succeed in Betul Kial, it will remove, it will protect you from this materialism and remove material suffering. When a man, when a human being is without suffering, for him, he has earned the wealth of the world. Think about it. A Greek philosopher, 2,500 years ago, put it in three sentences. He says, a human being is born crying, he leaves complaining, and he dies disappointed. That is the history of the human being. As soon as he's born, he cries. And throughout his life, he's shown how to fight and struggle and complain to get more and more and more, only to realize everything must be left behind and you leave this world disappointed. There is a beautiful verse in the Quran which can be interpreted in different ways. It says, when a person dies and is brought before God, and God says, now I'm going to open your books to see what kind of deeds did you do, and he says to God, please, allow me to go back. This time I promise I will do the things that I'm supposed to do. And Quran says that Allah tells him, no, he says, you are a liar. Every time you have gone back, you have come back with the same excuse. Is this our fate? Is this our objective? Why Quran mentions such things? Because it has something of significance to tell us about our daily life, our daily working. So members of the Jamaat, as a first point to you, this is some aspect of our foundation. How Imam gives us that grace and that mercy for us to realize that we must spend some time for the improvement of our soul. We cannot simply think and simply take our life for granted because no human being has been exempt from death and death is imminent. 
And when it will come, we do not know. Only He knows when it will come. Where it will happen, when it will happen, how it will happen, only He knows. We do not know. So we cannot take this life for granted. On a more practical note, many members of the Jamaat sometimes ask question and say, we like to come to Beitul Khyal, we like to practice Bangi, but we have one fundamental problem, and that is we cannot concentrate. They say concentration is a problem. We have great difficulty focusing in our ball. What is the solution? Solution, members of the Jamaat, is to some extent very clear. The question is, to what extent are we willing to put that solution into practice? The first thing is this. The first thing is this. When people say, when someone says, I can't concentrate, that's not true. If you think about it, think about it carefully, you will notice that your mind is always concentrating, always concentrating on something else. It may not be concentrating on what you want to concentrate, but it is concentrating on something else. So you don't have a problem of concentration. Your mind is concentrating, but you are not able to focus your mind or concentrate on what you want to concentrate. Therefore, you have no problem in concentration. But the problem is how to bring your concentration to what you want. And if you are coming to Betul Kyal, then obviously you will want to concentrate on your ball, on your isme azam. Or if, if you don't have ball, on whatever word that you are using for the purpose. How is, first of all, concentration defined? That's the first thing to know. How do we define concentration? What makes a person achieve that state of concentration that is required in Betul Kyal? The criteria is, members of the Jamaat, very simply, there must be purification of the heart which gives concentration, and purification of the heart is obtained through unselfish action. I will explain in a moment. But if concentration is a problem for you, then begin to think about this procedure. Purification of the heart. And to obtain that purification, you must involve yourself into unselfish action. When concentration is obtained, then the actions that you perform are the actions that you perform for the good of others. Attainment of this concentration means freedom from attachment of these sense objects. It means releasing yourself, renouncing things which perturb your mind. In our Ginans, our peers have explained this thing very clearly. Our peer says there are five most dangerous passions of the mind. Any one of these will either destroy or simply will not allow your mind to be in peace. In Ginan, peer calls it Panch Bu, Kam, Krod, Lob, Mo, and Mud. These five passions of the mind, if they are not controlled, 
they will remain as a disturbing factor no matter what you do because they are precisely that disruptors of the mind the first one calm is simply defined as lust we unfortunately live in a society where humankind today have lost many controls of their good senses and this society that we live in is heavily involved in lustful passions for example the degradation of the male and female form in this society abnormal desires heavy consumption of drugs alcohol tobacco heavy consumption of forbidden type of foods and things like that they are all part of creating the first quality negatively calm lust sometime when i tell people that by consuming the wrong type of food you can also create excitation of your mind and until some years people doubted these things as how can it be well today at MIT there has been research done about how the foods that you eat affects your mood and mind this thing has been told to us by hazrat imam sultan mahmud shah alaihi salam by our peers even many indication is given in hadith and quran the foods that you eat create specific effects but very simply imam himself has defined to us he says generally speaking eat food that is halal how do you make halal food halal does not simply mean recite bismillah before eating that is one thing halal means eat food where you have submitted your dasan that is the meaning of halal ensure that your dasan is clear without dasan there is no foundation of dua and without dua there is no foundation of bangi they build one on the other so halal means ensure that first of all your dasan is clear that is the foundation the second quality that of krod krod simply means anger which is definitely one of the five destructive actions of the mind fury slander evil gossip backbiting profanity fault finding jealousy malice impatience resentment destructive criticism ill will all these things which permeates our daily life are under the category of krod you say something ill about somebody you think you've said it not only that the vibration you brought out of your mouth remains around you and at the time you least expect they will hit you back they will disturb your mind they will cause perturbation all these negative qualities brings the mind out of focus the third quality lob greed lying hypocrisy perjury misrepresentation bribery miserliness all this is the category of greed and sometimes due to circumstances out of our control we sometimes are victimized with something like that the fourth category moho attachment delusive attachment infatuation worries anxiety ignorance darkness darkness of knowledge darkness of not knowing 
what you are involved in, especially after having taken and made a bayat, having taken an amanat from the imam and not fulfilling it. All this is a sign of attachment. When you make a commitment to the imam and you say to the imam, yes, I am going to practice my bangi regularly, and then you do not, it is a sign, it is a sign that you don't want to be attached to this, but you are be rather be attached to something else, more, false attachment. And the fifth quality, mud, that is pride, vanity, self-aggrandizement, like we say in Gujarati, humpanu, I, your ego, self-admiration, bigotry, show of wealth, bossiness, making